Now, this is the story of a chilling murder in Kerala by a 30-year-old Raja. And the reason why he did that is a superstitious belief. He's been accused of brutally murdering his parents, sister and his aunt using a machete. And that's not all. In a statement to the cops, Cadell admit, uh, admitted to be a devil worshipper, has claimed that he had committed gruesome murders while attempting astral projection. After the murders, Cadell cleaned the floor, set the bodies ablaze and left home for a walk. The neighbors alerted the police as smoke came from inside the house. Cops have, however, rubbished the Satanism and occultism claims, claiming that it was a planned murder executed after careful plotting Raja's house in Thiruvananthapuram where he murdered his family. It's a gory horror flick that was on display for the neighbors who saw smoke coming out of his uh, house after he set the bodies ablaze inside. What up, home slices? What up, home fries? And what up, homes of other varieties? So for today's video, Spirit decided what we were going to be doing today. And Spirit led me to the Kerala Horror House, a.k.a. the Kerala Nantanakod Astral Projection Ritual Case. Oh boy, was that fun to say. A lot of the information that's out there is in Hindi, so bear with me, I did the best that I could based off of the information I could find about this case. But essentially this case is actually in India. And uh, so we're gonna jump right into this. Kadal Jinsen Raja, 30 year old male, murdered his parents, sister and aunt, which he had planned out for three months. He set his parents and his aunt and his sister's body ablaze after cleaning the floor, then he left for a walk. He admitted to police to being a devil worshiper, also admitted to committing gruesome murders while attempting astral projection that was part of an occult practice. According to some sources, it was found that the murders were committed due to revenge over isolation and neglect in the family. Everyone in the family was well educated and Cadell seemed to fall short, which he believes is the reason his family members tended to neglect him, in addition for his father to scold him. Cadell didn't have friends and tended to self-isolate himself, making him pretty introverted with much time to himself, he spent a lot of time looking into astral projection and experimented with it. He allegedly went down some dark occult rabbit holes and got sucked in. Alleged mental health issues were brought up by doctors who claim he is not fit for trial. There are those who believe Cadell was of sound mind when he committed those gruesome murders and there are those who disagree. So he claims that the devil worshipping and the occult practices reasoning behind the murders that he gave to police was to mislead them. So I wanted to look at this case from a medium perspective to see what I could find out. And to do this, I asked Shiva, because he's one of my guides that helps me learn. and. I was like, hey, this is kind of in your jurisdiction. Can you help me like understand what was going on here? Because I felt that this case, there's more than meets the eye. And of course, Cadell is saying, oh, I just said this because I wanted to mislead police. But I knew that there was a paranormal element to it. And uh, yeah, so I went down this rabbit hole on the astral realm with Shiva. So, um, yeah, we're going to talk about it. And these notes will be put on Patreon. And guys, a lot of this information was on some websites. However, like when I went to go on Google to look them up, my um, virus software was saying, don't go there. So a lot of this is from the news 
clip that we watched at the beginning of this video. And from another video that I'll put up here, but a lot of it's in Hindi, so I only got bits and pieces of it. So for those of you who speak Hindi, who live in India, please correct me if I'm wrong with the information that I got. I don't speak Hindi, and so it's a little, uh, a little chaotic here in my notes. But now we're going to get into the channel notes that I did from meditation and from talking to Shiva. So I was told Cadell knew and knows right from wrong when he planned out the murder of his family members and acted on it. With that being said, though, that doesn't mean he wasn't mentally ill throughout his life. The way in which his family members interacted with him in combination with the predisposition to cope in an unhealthy matter, cultural factors, and perhaps other genetic issues may have spurred mental health problems such as depression or borderline personality disorder. While I am not a doctor and technically cannot diagnose somebody, I am still leaning towards from what I know from my studies of minoring in psychology that he kind of fits under the borderline personality disorder. Now, of course, every person experiences disorders differently and sometimes it's not a cookie cutter one size fits all type of deal and so borderline personality disorder might look different for him versus somebody else so just please keep that in mind but from what I'm feeling I'm gonna say he's kind of hovering around the borderline personality disorder due to common symptoms of like the fear of abandonment feelings of emptiness. I felt there was a lot of like depressive things going on. I do feel there was a paranoia element of like paranoia in terms of how he thinks others view him, but also in terms of stress. Then harmful, reckless, or impulsive behaviors, aka the murder, and many other things he may have done that were not like out in the public. Antisocial behavior, bursts of anger, hostility, suicidal thoughts, self-harming behavior. The news clip didn't like go through all these symptoms for him and one of the key things too is unstable relationships and he was not great at those whether it was just regular friendships or um, relationships with family members, stuff like that. And again, this is all alleged, but with that, it still doesn't change the fact that I feel that there is a paranormal element involved. Because he was already having mental health issues, I do see him having an attachment that only made his mental health problems worse. If you've watched me before, you know I talk about this. You can have mental health issues, you can have attachments, and you can have both simultaneously. But upon my meditation, I was seeing a dark shadowy entity whispering things into his ear to make his delusions worse. But more so, the ones about revenge towards his family and the paranoia about how certain people feel about him. And Spirit was highlighting certain things that the entity was saying specifically to Cadell, like, your father thinks you're useless, or your father makes you look like a fool in front of everyone. Stuff like that. Or, it's their fault you don't have any friends, or a girlfriend, or a wife. And once he was hooked in, it convinces him to retaliate. Because with the mental illness stuff, he's already ha he already has those thoughts in the back of his mind, but with the attachment, it's like those thoughts become more aggressive and more towards the front of his mind and just keep laying into him until eventually he believes it. Cadell's mental illness and trauma served as a crack in his armor 
where negative things could attach and influence him. That's how it got in. And at this point, I decided to take a nap because the way I gain some clairvoyant information is through astral travel or astral projection. <laughs> and the things I see are more vivid when I'm sleeping. Go figure, right? But during my nap, I saw an alternative path he would have chosen if he didn't murder his family members the way he did. So it's like, if he didn't commit those murders, he would have acted in another violent way. In this case, I see him uh, blowing up a building instead, which is not great, obviously. In his case, I feel like violence would have taken place no matter what. Again, mental health issues plus attachment. Now, I got up and I was fully awake and I wanted to do an active meditation. So during this time, I clairvoyantly and clairsentiently, I feel clammy like I'm ill and I see a man in autopilot walking down the road. It's very similar to the Arnie Johnson case of how, you know, he committed the murders or murder and he's walking down and he has no recollection of it whatsoever. It reminds me of that, but the only difference is Cadell had absolutely full memory of what he did. It's just I'm feeling that clamminess in the autopilot from him. I then start seeing a humanoid figure lounging on a couch wearing black and white plaid, long sleeve shirt, and black pants with black shoes. The head of the person is smoky and out of focus. I do see the hands resting on an armrest, so he's like laying back on like this couch or plush chair, and I feel like that is the same thing I was seeing whispering in his ear. The head and face were also dark and smoky like the thing that was whispering in his ear. So I'm like 99% sure it's the same thing. At first I'm like, it, it's giving human vibes, but at the same time it's not. It's very weird energetically. I do a pendulum test to validate like if it is demonic or not demonic, human or whatever. And the result I got from that was dark forces are involved, but it's leaning towards the middle of demonic and not demonic. So I'm like, okay. And I usually only do this if I'm kind of like not sure of the entity because what I'm feeling and seeing isn't really adding up. So that's why I did the pendulum test. This is when I asked Shiva specifically to show me as much as he could to see how, like, things began. I wanted to see Cadell's life story and when the trauma and attachment began and the type of being we were dealing with. Because, of course, you have many sides of the story. You have Cadell's side, which is kind of, like, muddied with mental illness, the attachment, his perspective. Of course, he's going to have a biased opinion because things happen to him. So I wanted to see like from an outside perspective and not from like the parents or the other family members, like an outside perspective. And I was like, Shiva, can you please show me what's happened? What is his life? I want to know what the truth is. So this is a full blown astral realm experience with Shiva during my active meditation. So we're not just talking like we were before. He takes me somewhere and shows me things. So first things first, Shiva took me to a stone temple with a large staircase out front and on the inside. It's like you walk in and then there's another staircase that goes down. There are many carvings of figures and stories on the intricate walls. He led me down a set of stairs into this area through a large carved rectangular stone doorway but there was no door it's just like the empty like arch doorway kind of thing that had been kind of warped like the stone was kind of falling apart but not 
completely to where you can't see what's going on with the carvings, but it was a little, a little warped through the centuries. And so he leads me down to this open room where a beautiful female with long black hair, gold jewelry, and clothes of red, she was kneeling over a small pool of water. So I'm looking at her. She's in front of like this pool of water that's kind of like, I don't know, 14 to 16 inches wide and like, I don't know, another 14 inches. So, I mean, it's not massive, but you can see a clear reflection coming back from the water and it's being lit up. Like it's some kind of magical water. It looked pretty neat, not gonna lie. The water had a green tint. It was like that, um, I don't know. It was kind of like this tint actually, if you can see it. Very pretty. And in this pool of water, we could see Cadell's situation, like his life and other things. So my only guess is they didn't say what the woman's name was, but I'm going to take a shot in the dark and say it was Saraswati. But again, I'm not sure. So the first thing I was shown was Cadell as a child sitting at a desk at school. He looked to be around the age of 10. He was fidgety and easily distracted and he was picked on a bunch. Making friends back then was difficult, but not impossible. The next thing I was shown was him as a teenager. His father tended to be more harder on him during this time, giving him lectures on school and trying to sway him to go down more steam paths. Instead of wasting time doing activities his parents didn't find suitable for him, often comparing him to his sister. And of course the father was like, during your age, I did this, this, and this. You need to be doing the same thing. And of course, Cadell did overhear some private conversations that his parents had with one another. And of course, this kind of hurt him, this hurt him tremendously. And this is where the negative emotions kind of started to pick up and fester. And the negative self-talk started as well. And this is where the attachment began because the things he could hear his parents say made him very insecure, made him very self-conscious of himself and how other people viewed him. Over the years, Cadell tried growing up the way his father wanted, especially enrolling in schools and picking majors he thought would make his parents happy. However, because he didn't have a genuine interest in those things, it made it difficult to continue to push through the difficulties and write it out, so he gave up. Again, there are hobbies he wanted to pursue because he had a genuine interest, but they were deemed as inappropriate or not good enough or considered to be not respectable by his family and his parents. I could hear arguments about Cadell not being good enough to get married and how he was an embarrassment, which sent him into more of a downward spiral where he began to self-isolate more than he already had been. Technically, he was already self-isolating just to pursue the hobbies that he genuinely likes because he had to hide it from his family. Because if they found out he was doing certain things, his family would just start laying into him again with how he needs to be more respectable and pick things that would make his family proud. And he just didn't want to hear it, so he did a lot of those things in private. But one day he did stumble upon a rabbit hole about astral projection and was captivated by it. Upon diving into many resources from dark occult practices to general spirituality practices, he wanted to learn it for himself, which is understandable. Now remember, he already had an attachment, but by engaging in astral projection and not understanding spiritual safety or how energy works, he unintentionally created a portal which allowed the attachment to become closer to him metaphysically and more effective in its influence tactics. From there, the attachment continued to use Cadell's insecurities, traumas, and mental illness to manipulate him. So guys, if you don't know, if you have a haunting or an attachment and you engage in like spiritual practices such as astral projection or any kind of divination, things 
like cards or pendulums or even a Ouija board, if you're not careful in what you're doing and you don't have the proper um, safety things put in place, you can accidentally create portals in your space and when you have things already in your space haunting you or an attachment, what happens is that portal brings the entity in question closer. Now, because they are made out of a different type of energy, they can't just like, boom, become a person and become something that's like directly in this reality or realm or whatever you want to call it. It just puts them closer or as close as they can get in the current state that they are. And so that's what happened. It got closer to him so its tactics were more effective. Before it crossed that little threshold, it, it kind of like could do things here and there and make some of those thoughts more frequent and louder but now it's like in his head like he's hearing this or for him it's more clear cognizant but it's in his head and it's masking like it's his own thoughts and that's how it influenced and tricked him so Sarah Swati she showed me Cadell's three month planning phase or just planning phase but I can see him walking into this store and as he's walking into this store to gather like the supplies he needs to do what he's gonna do i see this entity's face over his it's like overlaying on top of it so to me to me that's as close as possession a person can get without being possessed it's like in his head it's his thoughts but he's still maneuvering his actions if that makes sense and I will show you the picture of the entity I'm going to put it here so I've never seen anything like this the energy is completely different from what I'm used to so I asked Shiva and Saraswati I'm like what type of entity we're dealing with because like I said, I was confused. It could shapeshift and look human if it wanted to, but it could also turn into this gray smoke and be formless. The energetic vibration did not feel like the demons I was used to. It felt completely different. The part of the frequency or vibration that felt the heaviest was kind of more like the consciousness and like, I'm sorry for my explanation, because it's not great. I don't even know how to put it into words. And for them to explain it to me was already difficult because it was something that many humans cannot fathom in general. So again, I did my best to explaining how this energy came across. But it's like the mind aspect or the conscious aspect of this energy was the heaviest and not like the physical or more physical aspects or traits that would affect my physical senses, like the clairsentience, but I didn't feel much physical pain at all. So that's, you guys know, I'm a physical medium, so nasty things will mess with my health any chance they can get. However, this entity is different because where its strengths are isn't so much in how it can make a person feel physically, whether they are clairsentient or not. It's more in the mind aspect. So that's why I was like tripped up because one of my cues for really negative things is how I feel in my body and I wasn't feeling it in my body, but I was feeling the heaviness in my mind and head if without having a headache. It's so hard to explain. I'm sorry if this is so confusing because it's confusing me. But yeah, it's really difficult to put into words. So Shiva explained that this type of being is much different than what I'm used to. It's non-human but feeds on negative energy. However, it's not like the demons in the Christian religion or the demons that we come to know in the Western culture 
So, like, the United States, South America, North America, and parts of Europe, it's different. It's not the same type. They are more similar to the type of being that some of the Hindu deities are, but also not quite the same. But in terms of my comprehension, Shiva explained that they are closer to what him and Saraswati are than to, like, the demons, for example, like Lucifer or Satan or Blau. Like, they're different. I was then shown a being with the same face I drew riding a horse into battle alongside many others who look similar, bearing a scimitar and holding it in the air like they're charging into battle. Dust blew everywhere as the horses kicked up dirt as they stampeded. Guys, this, this astral experience was a ride. Was a ride. But, um, so essentially that's the experience that they showed me. And I love learning, especially about different types of entities, things that I've never come across before. And this was a really great learning lesson. And in, in many different cultures, you have entities that are completely different from what we have here in North America and even South America. It just depends on the culture and the religions and stuff like that. It's bananas. So do I think he is a devil worshiper? No. I honestly just believe he said that to throw off police and just kind of give that f fear factor. And But also that was the entity too, telling him to say that because it's trying to invoke fear into people. But I do think he was on some dark occult websites trying to learn bits of information about this. And so it might appear that he was a devil worshiper, but I don't really think he was. Now, this is just coming from opinion and not me going and looking psychically. So this is just my opinion, but I don't feel like he was really a devil worshiper. I think mental illness played a huge role and his traumas as well and then the attachment kind of just made those things worse and he acted out on it based off of influence. So I don't really think he's a devil worshiper. But yeah guys, I mean, that's all I got. I do feel like it's sad that this happened. This happened in 2017 I believe, so this is pretty recent. Yeah, this happened April 8th, 2017, so it's kind of more recent. But, guys, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below. I always love answering your comments and things. But again, thank you guys so much for watching, and uh, we'll see you guys soon. Peace out.